Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and do a quick recap of everything that you all have learned so that it's better sustained inside of your memory. So we began this course by understanding why synchronization is important, right? And there were several points of why synchronization is important is it leads to intermittent test failures. It leads to false positives and negatives. And it leads to slower test execution time. So all of these kind of make your tests seem flaky. And when your tests seem flaky, it not only demoralizes you, it demoralizes your team, and therefore they start to trust automation less, which is a really bad situation to be in when nobody trusts your automated software testing because they're like, oh, these tests, you know, they never give us the right result. So if they never give us the right result, why should we trust it now? And so now you have to win back the trust of your entire team by showing them why your tests are good. So that's a situation that you never want to get into. So after we learned why synchronization is so important, we learned several different types of selenium timeouts that exist and those are implicit implicit timeouts if you remember are those defined by selenium web driver it's just the driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly wait and then you specify the amount of time that you want web driver to wait uh, it's great because it's easy to use it's bad because once you define that timeout that lasts for the entire duration of the driver and so therefore that's not good because sometimes your elements may load slower sometimes they may load faster and so you don't want a timeout stuck on your driver because that can lead to again false positives and false negatives so then we moved on to learning why and how to fix the implicit weight problem and that was using the explicit weight the explicit weights were code that you define in order for WebDriver to wait for an element to be in a certain state, right? It can be as bad as thread.sleep. That's an explicit weight because you define the code. However, you should never use it because thread.sleep is a static timeout that has similar implications as to the implicit weight. Uh, thread that sleep is just really bad because it's just pure hard coding and whenever your environment is either running faster or slower you're going to run into trouble because your tests again are going to be flaky so finally what we settled upon was using the web driver weight class and expected conditions the expected conditions class uh, has a bunch of predefined conditions that Selenium bindings have for us, like element is visible, element exists, wait until element is in the DOM, wait until alert is present, and so on and so forth. And all of those allow us to interact with different elements under different conditions to get a specific result that we desire. And then finally, after explicit weights, we learned about fluent weights. But remember that fluent weights are only in Java because this is the parent class from which WebDriver weight inherits. So in the C sharp bindings, this is known as a default weight. So the default weight is nice because it allows us to granularly get in to the waiting class and define the messaging, the polling, the exceptions to be ignored, and all the conditions. But the problem with it is that it is a bit hefty to utilize and it's not very practical. There, and there is no need to really use it because the WebDriver weight class kind of wraps the default weight class and gives us all the functionality that we need in a single line of code as opposed to about five or six line of codes that the default weight requires for us to set up and make it work. And so that's about it. I had a fun tutorial with you guys. Thanks again for tuning in and see you all next time.